Please stand for our opening. <coughs> Beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our health is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
I now ask you before God, is this your sincere confession that you heartily repent of your sins, believe on Jesus Christ, and sincerely and earnestly purpose by the assistance of God the Holy Ghost, henceforth to amend your sinful life, then declare so by saying, Yes. Upon this, your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Divine attention is now directed to the first reading of Holy Scripture for this Palm Sunday, as this is recorded in the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, reading from verse 9 to verse 10. <clears throat> Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to God. We will now sing him 161.
Hear now also the epistle lesson for this Sunday, as this is recorded in St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, reading from verse 5 to verse 11, as follows. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the epistle. sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest. Here ends the gospel. We will now confess our most holy Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is the worship and glorified, whose face are the prophets. And I believe one 
Christian and Apostolic Church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Today marks the beginning of Holy Week, the culmination of the entire season of Lent, and in fact, the most holy week in the entire church calendar. At this time, we see everything that has been building up in our hearts and minds since before Christmas fulfilled. 
all of our meditations during Advent, the celebration of the Incarnation at Christmas, the manifestation of the Epiphany, and the Passion of Lent, they all reach their climax in the events of this blessed week. Throughout our Lenten meditations, focusing mainly on the time between Maundy Thursday evening and Good Friday afternoon, we've watched with grieving eyes and heard from his own words just how the Lord Jesus accomplished our redemption and brought us salvation. But today, the beginning of this blessed week, we rejoice with the people of Jerusalem who welcomed this great prophet, this high priest, and even this great king with believing hearts as he rode into the city. Today on this Palm Sunday we parade with the crowds of people that went before and those that followed, lifting up our joyful voices and saying, Save now we pray. That is, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. We hear in the Gospel lesson read before that as the disciples followed Jesus making his way to Jerusalem before his crucifixion, they knew that danger awaited them. But they believed him to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. And how those two things would be reconciled, or rather, how they would actually work together to accomplish our redemption, they could not understand. But Jesus knew that to be the Christ, that is, to be the Anointed One, the King of Israel, and the Son of David. What kind of a king is he? One of the first things we'll notice from our text is the way in which Jesus chose to enter the city of Jerusalem. He didn't tell his disciples to go get the biggest and flashiest horse, the way that movie stars arrive on the red carpet. No, he came in, this incarnate Son of God, God from all eternity, the creator of all things, riding on a lowly donkey, almost comical, so ironic, different from what you would expect, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, the only potentate to show himself. And what's more, he didn't just choose to ride on a donkey, but on the colt, that is, the, the young one. What sort of demonstration was this for such a great king? Well, it was a demonstration, an exhibition of Jesus' current state, his state of humiliation. We read of this state in our epistle lesson earlier, that being found in fashion as a man, Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Just before our Gospel text, Jesus told his disciples, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify, and the third day he will rise again. Matthew chapter 20. These words sound foreboding. And it's true, they are. They do foretell Jesus' great passion. But they're more than just foreboding. These words are words of victory. A victory that just happens to be celebrated in our Gospel lesson for today, brought forward in time before his resurrection. It might seem odd to think of a victory parade taking place before the conflict, before the triumph, before the battle. After all, the cross is still a few days away. The great glory of the resurrection is even beyond that. But for Christ, who knew the end game that his Father had ordained from before the foundation of the world, this was a celebration worth moving forward in time. We know this text well. The disciples brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Lord, Hosanna in the highest. There's not a hint of melancholy in that entire song. Not a hint of lamentation. No, their voices were not expressing sadness or sorrow because of what Jesus had come to suffer. Instead, these people praised their king, the son of David, as their savior. These words, blessed is he, come from Psalm 118, a psalm which declares the Lord's triumph over life and death. A psalm which talks of peace and prosperity, of God's mercy and salvation. It's very interesting to note also that the words of Psalm 118, blessed is he, these are immediately followed by the words, bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. Because everything worth celebrating in this song has to do with this sacrifice. And Christ, in our gospel, is being led as the sacrificial lamb, and the people sing his praises. This celebration of Palm Sunday it almost serves as a sneak peek of what was waiting for Jesus on the other side of his resurrection from the dead. As he would go through his passion, Jesus often looked past the suffering to the glory that would follow. Even saying to Caiaphas, Hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. It can rightly be said that the palms, the carpet, the clothing, the psalms, and songs of praise shouted at the gateway to Jerusalem, these were just the beginning, a taste of Jesus' glorification, which we also heard in our epistle lesson right before, in which God declares Jesus' name to be the name above every name, at whose name every knee should bow. As I said, this victory parade came before the main event. How did Christ accomplish such a feat? Why, if he was truly victorious, did he enter the city in such a humble fashion? Christ rode on a little donkey. And as it turned out, the path of life led to the cross, and victory over death would only be won through death. Now our Lord doesn't conquer by spilling the blood of his enemies, but by spilling his own blood for them. Our Lord does not come to lay on his people a burden of guilt and punishment, or an even stricter burden of the law, but instead, as he rode on this donkey, showed himself to be our burden bearer, our beast of burden, who takes away the sin of the world. And the kind of procession that we read about here in the Gospel, with all its pomp, this might ordinarily be followed up with a coronation, the crowning of a new king, the son of David. Except in this case, there was no such glory that awaited Jesus in the city of kings by the people. In his case, the crown set upon his noble brow would be made of thorns. Rather than being escorted to the throne of David, he would be enthroned upon the awful tree of the cross. His scepter, a crude reed that soldiers would snatch away and use to beat him on the head. And no more would the people spread their clothes in the way, but his own clothes would be ripped apart and offered as the prize of gamblers and greed. His royal cup would be a cup of wrath poured out by the Father. And his court would be made up of mockers and blasphemers, mourners. And the songs of Hosanna in the highest would be replaced with the coarse and rude cry, Crucify him, crucify him. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Christ was able to experience this pre-victory parade on Palm Sunday, not simply because he knew, according to his divine nature, the end and the glory that waited for him beyond the cross, but because also he trusted in his Father's gracious will and plan of salvation. Jesus trusted that he would win the victory and so acts as though he already had won the victory. And now we have the advantage of reading the story and knowing the events from the very last chapter. Jesus fulfilled his Father's will to save us. So even though, as we get closer and closer to Good Friday evening, the scene seems to get darker and darker and darker, we already know of the victory that comes on Easter morning. We don't watch Christ again and again die for the sins of the world year after year. We rehearse it, and we celebrate and commemorate it. And we rejoice in the victory which he has won already for us. Faith. Faith confidently celebrates with a parade before the final victory. Because Jesus entered Jerusalem in his pre-victory parade, we can join in the celebration with our hosannas. Through faith, we abide safely and securely in this gracious kingdom of the Son of God. As our saving king, as we heard Zechariah say, who humbled himself to save his sinful subjects, we ought to spend our entire lives behaving in a way that glorifies his exceeding great name that name which is above every name. The honor and glory of Christ's name that's found in the prayers and praises of every true believer. It is found in the heart when we trust in the Lord for pardon from sin and from deliverance from every evil. It's found when we reverently read and study his word for our spiritual growth. It's found in the way we live our daily lives, the way that we interact with one another. By living each and every day to please God with our behavior, following his commandments as the fruit of our faith, we do glorify the name of our good and gracious King. Let us, like the people of Jerusalem, give of ourselves to his glory. As the people took off their own clothes and spread them in the way so that Jesus could walk on them. Let us spare nothing of ourselves. As Jesus says, do not worry about what you shall put on. Don't worry about what shall we eat, what shall we drink, wherewithal shall we be clothed. Our Heavenly Father already knows that we need these things. We give of ourselves, we give to one another, and we give praise and thanks. King who has done all of this for us and who gave himself. Today we go about singing his praises. Today we go out calling out our hosannas just as the multitude of old did. And we don't have a donkey in the parade. We have here instead it's the Holy Sacrament where we have and receive the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in with and under the bread we have and receive his true blood in with and under the wine. His body and blood are truly present for us to eat and drink, that we might receive him within us, and forgiveness, and strength, and greater faith. We don't need to cast out our clothes into the mud for our Lord to ride on, but we confess with our words and our hymns and our communing together that here is the Lord of Palm Sunday coming to us in his body and blood to rule in our hearts by his grace. Just as they shouted, Hosanna, we sing the Amen to the words of Jesus in the consecration of this supper. Not asking how it can be, but hearing our Lord and trusting him even when we don't know how. Confessing him and his gifts before him. As we begin this holy week, let us prepare our hearts to view Christ's holy passion in true repentance for our sins and faith in his promise of salvation. 
following him to his bitter cross on Good Friday evening, we should remember why he humbled himself to such a degree. Not for his own sake, not just for his own glory, but for us to accomplish our redemption and to bring us salvation. We should also celebrate his great victory over death. A victory over death through death. Knowing that Jesus was not left in the grave after his crucifixion. But as we heard in the epistle lesson, the Father highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Those in heaven, and those on earth, and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hosanna in the highest. That ancient song we sing. For Christ is our Redeemer and the Lord of heaven, our King. And may we ever praise him with heart and life and voice. And in his blissful presence eternally rejoice. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through abiding faith in Christ Jesus unto life and
give success to the Christian training of the young, to all lawful, lawful occupations on land and at sea, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, and crown them with thy blessing. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring before thee, for thou hast purchased us to be thine own, that we may live unto thee. O Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord God, who asks not pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live, and who of thine infinite goodness didst deliver up thine only begotten Son in his death as a sacrifice for our sins. For his sake, remember not our ingratitude and our indifference, but have mercy upon us and forgive us all our sins. As thy dear Son was wounded for our transgressions, and by his stripes we are healed. Let us daily, with true repentance and sincere faith, meditate upon his passion, that his death may be our life, his righteousness our salvation, his conflict our victory and everlasting peace. Replenish us with thy Holy Spirit, that loving thee with our whole hearts, we may walk in thy ordinances blameless. Teach us to love one another, to bear one another's burdens, and so to fulfill the law of Christ, who came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and who gave his life a ransom for them. Help us likewise to love our enemies, and from our hearts to forgive everyone his trespasses against us. Let us follow the example of our Savior in patiently enduring the trials and afflictions of this present world, that having suffered with him, we may also be glorified. For his sake, hear all who cry to thee in sorrow and distress, and relieve them according to their several necessities. To show thy blessing upon the ministry of reconciliation, may the preaching of the cross become a message of peace and a power of God unto the ends of the earth, that the nations that sit in darkness may be delivered from their sins and glorify thy gracious name with all their saints. Embolden the ministers of thy word to preach in season and out of season, Christ and him crucified, calling sinners to repentance and believers to rejoice in thy salvation. May the death of thy Son be our comfort in our last hour, and let us depart in peace to rise with him unto life everlasting. Lord Jesus, who callest unto thee all that labor and are heavy laden, to refresh them and to give rest unto their souls, we pray thee, let these guests experience thy love at the heavenly feast which thou hast prepared for thy children on earth. Keep them from impenitence and unbelief, that no one may partake of this holy sacrament to his damnation. Take off from them the spotted garment of the flesh and of their own righteousness, and adorn them with the garment of the righteousness purchased with thy blood. Strengthen their faith, increase their love and hope, and after this life, grant them a place at thy heavenly table, where they shall eat of the eternal manna, and drink of the river of thy pleasure forevermore. These and whatsoever other things thou would have us ask of thee, O God, grant them to us for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of Jesus Christ, thy only Son, our Lord and Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end.
thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to the Almighty God that thou hast refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we beseech thee that of thy mercy thou wouldst strengthen us through the same in faith toward thee and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Thank you. 